Welcome to Introduction to Project Management, Team Management, and Communications. This is Lecture A. The objectives for team management and communications are to identify and describe roles of members on a project team, develop the human resources plan, acquire, develop, manage, and lead the project team, identify project communication responsibilities, develop a communication plan. This lecture will focus on the first two objectives. The key topics covered in this unit are human resources and project communications. These are key elements of any project, regardless of size, scope, or field of work. The human resources component of this unit is broken down into three topic areas, project roles, the project team, and the development of the human resources plan. The project communications component of this unit is broken down into two topic areas, key project responsibilities and the project communication plan. The following health IT scenario describes the functionality and requirements of a clinical research management system, or CRMS. A large academic medical research hospital would like to implement an electronic clinical research tracking system to replace the paper-based system they currently have. The system is part of regulatory changes just implemented by the Centers for Disease Control, CDC, and Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS. All clinical research would be tracked from beginning to end in the system. The system would track between 1,500 to 2,000 ongoing approved research projects, up to 10,000 non-approved projects, and an unlimited number of completed projects for up to 26 years. The system would serve over 5,000 primary and co-investigators. Current personnel, one medical director, 10 research nurses, five executive assistants, and office personnel. The features of the system should include, but not be limited to, tracking of individual ongoing and completed research projects, the ability to attach ongoing documentation to any project, whether current or completed, ability to send electronic files to regulatory and compliance bodies for reporting purposes, and reporting for statistical and financial needs. Take some time to think about the scenario just mentioned. How would you staff this project? How would you manage the staff roles, workloads, and morale? What communication protocols would you put in place? The scope of project human resource management includes team development and leadership. A project team, sometimes referred to as project staff, typically includes members with skills necessary to achieve your project's objectives. Leverage their expertise and encourage their engagement in the project by including them in the early planning stages. Members who have a stake in the outcomes of your project will be more strongly committed to the work. Team composition and roles can shift to meet the changing demands of a project through its life cycle. A project management team, which you sometimes hear referred to as a core, executive, or leadership team, oversees the development and operation of the project. The management team, under the leadership of the project manager, develops the project plan and controls, monitors, and closes the project with input from the project team. Assisted by the project sponsor, it works to attract financial support, control project scope, and manage the needs of team members. All departments and levels of staff need to be represented on the team. In a healthcare IT project, it is just as important to have a unit clerical staff member as to have doctors, nurses, and administrative staff. As defined in the third and fourth editions of the PMBOK, the processes that comprise project human resource management include human resource development, as well as team acquisition, development, and management. Project managers deploy these practices throughout the life cycle of a project and may implement them in each phase as necessary. Although presented as individual processes, they often occur simultaneously. The project management team also aims to manage risk and timelines during the project. The diagram on this slide illustrates the progression through the various sub-processes that make up the overall HR management process.
We start by developing the HR plan during the project planning phase. Then, during project execution, we establish project staff assignments, assessing team performance and adjusting as required. And finally, utilizing change requests to ensure our project team remains appropriate for the project. The rest of the HR process section will look in detail at each of the processes within the HR management process. After the project team has identified all activities that must be performed, they determine resource requirements, which are used to develop a human resource plan. Resources on an IT project could include a business analyst, systems engineer, system architect, database administrator, and any of a number of other roles. The human resource plan development process involves identifying and documenting project roles and responsibilities. There are three key inputs that assist in the development of an HR plan. These are enterprise environmental factors, organizational process assets, and activity resource requirements. It is important to consider environmental factors in the enterprise you are working within, such as politics, budgets, competing priorities, and other factors unique to your working environment. Also, you must take into account the existence of established organizational processes. These can be greatly beneficial. If your organization already has a clearly defined process for project management and HR plan development, you will find it a much easier task to create the HR plan. At the point of developing the HR plan, it is essential to identify and describe the types, quantities, and timing of the resources required for each activity in a work package. TAP University states, quote, to document the roles and responsibilities in the human resource plan, the organization's organizational charts and position descriptions are used. These outline reporting relationships. Networking in order to know more people and to know people better is especially helpful at the beginning of the project when people are being selected for the team. Having an understanding of how people work together and how they are motivated is also helpful in putting together a good team." End quote. Having a basic understanding of organizational, motivational, and group process theories can be very valuable during an HR plan development. TAP University continues with, quote, The human resource plan contains the roles and responsibilities of those involved in the project, organization charts outlining reporting relationships specific to the project, and the staffing management plan. There is much information contained in the staffing management plan, including a description of how staff will be acquired and released, resource calendars, training needs, how safety and compliance issues will be addressed, and how rewards will be given to team members." End quote. Resources in a healthcare IT project include doctors, nurses, clerical staff, departmental staff such as laboratory, radiology, pharmacy, occupational therapy, and administrative staff. As part of the project management plan, which focuses on particular objectives and deadlines, the staffing management plan details the human resource requirements for both the project team and the project management team. The size and requirements of the project, as well as the type of application under development, decide the details of the staffing management plan. Whether formal or informal, comprehensive or general, the staffing management plan must be individualized for each project to ensure that your team operates smoothly. The staffing management plan outlines the requirements for identifying and hiring a project team based on the general staff needs detailed during the initiate stage. The timeline in this slide shows the steps required to produce an effective staffing plan. They are as follows. Define the roles and skills that are needed. What roles and skills are required to complete your project? Determine timetables. When and for how long will your staff be needed? Determine availability. Do the staff with the required skills exist in your organization? Are they available when you need them? If they do not exist in your organization, how will you procure them? Secure the required staff. Negotiate to have any internal staff you may need to be dedicated to your project when you need them. If internal staff are not available, you must find resources and procure the required staff from an external source. Identify training needs. 
If your project staff needs to develop new skills, you must identify these needs and procure the appropriate training. This is particularly common in high-tech and other industries with rapidly training tools and skill sets. Iteratively, refine the plan. As the project progresses, be sure to stay on top of how staffing needs may change and are changing so you can keep the project team dynamic to ensure project success. There are various tools that can be used and included in a staffing plan. The resource calendar is one of the most common tools and it is used to determine and display which staff will be needed over time to complete the project. It is a useful tool for visualizing and planning resource allocation within an organization. The example in this slide is the simplest possible version of the resource calendar. It displays the number of resources required by month to undertake the required project activities. A resource calendar is useful to frontline managers, such as nursing managers, to understand when and how much staff will be needed to backfill for the nursing personnel that will be working on the project. Many times, administrative time is used for project needs, but if the nurse on the project is needed more than they have administrative time, then the nurse manager will need to backfill for that person. This is also an additional cost to the project for that person's time. Unit staffing schedules are created six to eight weeks before that schedule is to start. The schedules are finalized two to three weeks before the first day of the schedule. This needs to be taken into account when planning resources from the nursing unit. The Role Requirements Grid outlines the positions and duties necessary to complete the project. For each project role, it details its responsibilities, necessary skills, the number of employees assigned to that role, and the estimated start and finish dates for that role on the project. Defining and documenting project roles in this fashion assists greatly in determining detailed staffing needs and is often used to pair needs with existing institutional resources or to determine if outside resources will be required. Also, it helps with the allocation of resources within an organization and informs the detailed version of the resource calendar. A role requirements grid can be used to identify the best fit for the staff and the role. Many times, one staff member can be used in multiple roles, decreasing the number of personnel resources needed. A Responsibility Assignment Matrix, or RAM, is a diagram which correlates the project organizational structure to the work breakdown structure. The matrix diagram depicts the work which must be performed and the assigned individual or team responsible for performing the work. The responsibility assignment matrix in this slide is the simplest possible format with activities defined in rows and the check placed in the name column below the name of the person or persons responsible for an activity. A responsibility assignment matrix can depict when a staff member is overloaded. Example, if you know that you have a nurse for three hours a week, but your responsibility assignment matrix shows that that person is responsible for most of the activities, you may need to request additional resources. There are various ways to approach and format a responsibility assignment matrix. One of the most common is called a RACI matrix. It provides more detail on the roles of each responsibility assignment. In the example above, letters are placed in the columns instead of X's, providing a bit more detail on the responsibilities of the person to the corresponding activity. In this grid, R equates to responsible, those who do the work to complete the task. Usually, one role is assigned as responsible, although other roles can assist in carrying out the task. A equates to accountable, those who are ultimately accountable for the correct and thorough completion of the deliverable or task, and the one to whom responsible is accountable. In other words, an accountable must sign off or approve on work that the responsible party delivers. Only one role can be assigned as accountable for each job or product. C equates to consulted. Those who provide input on the project, they maintain an open dialogue with the team regarding the project and I equates to informed. Those who receive regular updates on the work, timeline, or budget of a project, typically at milestone deadlines or if problems arise. 
they do not usually provide input to the project. When the same role is both responsible and accountable for a task, the matrix shows only the role that is accountable. Except for this instance, each task role combination should be assigned one letter or participation type. Assigning multiple participation types can confuse team members and lead to delays. The project organization chart is a graphical picture of the organization and reporting relationships of the project. The example presented in this slide is very simple and illustrates the reporting relationships for a generic health IT project. An organization chart is very useful for understanding working relationships both in a project and an organization. Often these charts clarify reporting relationships and the relationship between project teams and the larger organizational structure. This information is extremely useful when planning communications and identifying project stakeholders as well as determining project accountability. In the above example, you can see that the clinical specialist, interface designer, programmer, and business analyst all report up to the project manager who must answer to the project sponsor. Understanding these reporting relationships is essential. An organizational chart is also useful for showing the holes that you have not filled in your project staff. At that point, you can go to the responsible manager and request a resource for your project. Based on your analysis of the staffing needs, develop an organizational chart for the CRMS scenario described on slide 4. Don't spend more than 10 minutes preparing the chart. This concludes Lecture A of Team Management and Communications. In summary, we discussed the various tools that can be used and included in a staffing plan. These tools include a responsibility assignment matrix and organization charts.